beautiful friends and welcome back to my cozy little corner of YouTube. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I am so happy to see you today. I hope that you guys had a great week and I hope you are excited for the weekend. It is a Friday so if you had a rough week you made it through the week. Give yourself a big pat on the back. Give yourself a big hug. <sighs> You did it. And if you had a good week, I'm so happy that you had a good week. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. It is Friday and on my channel on Fridays, we do something called Community Spotlight. So today I'm gonna be here doing Community Spotlight, which is spotlighting you guys and your makes. If you're here watching this video, that means you're part of my community and that means that you are always welcome to participate in Community Spotlight if you should so choose. You're not pressured to though, of course, this is uh, something that you can just choose to do if you would like to. So if you don't know what Community Spotlight is, you are probably new here. I just want to take a second to welcome you to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here with us today. And of course, welcome back to my gnomies who have been around. Um, Community Spotlight is basically just something that is uh, to celebrate you guys, to celebrate the stuff that you've been making. Um, it doesn't have to be crochet. It can be anything you've been up to, anything crafty, uh, anything that you've made. And basically, you can send me your makes throughout the week. My email is in the description box below all of my videos. It is uh, novagnomecreations at gmail.com. If you would like to send me any community spotlight makes, you just send me an email with pictures attached, put community spotlight as the subject line, and then attach whatever it is you've made. There's no limit on how many things you can send or anything like that. You just attach them all in there. The only thing I require you to put in your email is your name that you would like me to credit you as when I put together the spotlight. So other than that, you could put anything you want in there. Uh, you could tell me about supplies that you use. You could tell me like, oh, I use this yarn or this hook or this pattern. Um, I used some, I don't know, this type of air dry clay or, you know, whatever, if you want to. Um, you can let me know what inspired you, where you got the idea from, you know, basically whatever it is you feel like sharing about what you're sending in, or you could just let me know nothing. I really am not requiring anything. I really don't mind if you just send me an email that's just like, I'm Joe Schmo and you just attach your pictures. It's totally fine. You don't, it's not a, it, it's a no pressure thing. You know, you can send in as little or as much info as you want to. So basically what happens is I don't open those emails until Fridays and then on Friday I go and I put this video together and I open all those emails. Um, I like to not open them because it's easier for me to know what I've included in a community spotlight. Um, so then I know, hey, if I haven't opened it yet, it hasn't been included in a community spotlight yet. So um, don't worry if I'm not replying to them. It's not that I didn't get them. It's just that I leave them till Friday and then I go through and I open all of them, get everything out of them, put together the video, and then you'll know uh, that you're obviously, obviously I got your email because you'll be in community spotlight. Um, you're allowed to send them at any point, or you're welcome to send them, I should say. <laughs> you're allowed to send them sounds like a... I don't know, weirdly strict, but you're welcome to send them at any point in time. Uh, they'll always just go into the next spotlight video. So that is what community spotlight is. Uh, sometimes I show you guys things that I've been working on or whatever, um, like just different stuff goes on along with community spotlight on Fridays. It just depends on the week. This week, whew, it's been a week guys. Okay, so for one, I have to address the fact that I am wearing this. So um, I have been wanting to get, they're called Udis or Udis. Uh, they're like sweatshirts that are like really comfy and thick and like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's like Sherpa lined. Um, they're really, really thick and comfy. They're like oversized and like, uh, they're just kind of like wearing a blanket. I've been wanting to get one of these forever. I didn't have one, um, but they had a Pokemon collaboration, um, but these are really hard to get because they go out of stock and then they don't stock them again. So last time that they had these, I put myself on a wait list um, to be told when they go back in stock. So a couple months ago, I got notified that they were back in stock for pre-order. So I actually bought this a few months ago and I did like a pay in four. So I actually just finished paying it off and then it also just came in. Um, so it, I've been waiting a couple months on this and I love it. I literally love it so much. Now I want more of these and to just live in them for the rest of my life. They're so comfy cozy. 
Um, so that is what I'm wearing. If you guys wondered what this was, it is an hoodie. <laughs> uh, basically, it's just hoodie without an H. Um, it is a brand that does these like, I'm not sure if they're called like if they're like the ideas like blanket hoodies or what um but they're just these like oversized comfy cushy like super thick and soft um hoodies and they have like a giant pocket on the front there's the pocket <laughs> i love it i love it i love it so of course i had to tell you guys about that but anyway i had a week guys so if you've been around a little bit you guys probably know that we were having tr problems with our truck. So we have had, I went to Michigan to visit my sister and be there when, when uh, my new niece was born and help out. Thankfully I was because there ended up being some issues and she ended up having to have surgery with her gallbladder and all this stuff. If you've been here, you guys have, you, you know about it. But if you haven't been here, that's kind of the gist of what happened. Um, when I like, the last like week or so that I was gone um our truck quit working so my hubby was having to find rides he was having to borrow his car like borrow cars um like okay his mom is retired so he would like go and borrow her car and then bring it back to her and then I don't know get rides. like she would pick him up and drop him off and all this you know just basically arranging it however they he could with friends or family to get rides and everything while they tried to figure out what was wrong with it. And I mean, like, they tried everything under the sun. Um, everybody in the family or friends who is, like, automotively inclined came to look at it. Um, they tried replacing the battery. They tried, like, doing anything that they could um, think of because it just, it wouldn't turn on. Um, and eventually they ended up having to get it into the shop. Um, there's like a family friend who has a shop, so they actually had to wait for there to be space in their shop. And then, um, all in all, it ended up taking weeks. And so that was like a, like a very taxing, um, situation, you know, to be having to find rides and all this stuff. And then of, of course, paying to get it fixed ended up being almost a thousand dollars. Um, and it ended up being some kind of like computer malfunction, um, in the computer you know, stuff of the truck. I don't really know. Um, it took them like, once they got it into the shop, it took them like another week or two to find the problem, like going through and just trying to find it. Um, but anyway about it, they got that sorted and he got the truck back and we've had it back for a while, like, I don't know, several weeks. <sighs> Guess what's having problems again? The truck. So I think it was Tuesday after work, he goes to leave to come home and engines being super loud. It won't go over like 30 miles an hour, like no matter how much you're like flooring it. Um, so now it's not drivable, obviously, because like you don't want to drive it like that. That'd be bad for it. So basically he just got it home and now he can't drive it again. And he's looking it up online and he's thinking this is probably going to be like transmission problem or something. And that's like not something we can do. Like we can't afford to fix that. Um, we would probably be better off getting a new vehicle if it's the transmission is basically what he was saying. But we don't have money for that either. Um, so basically it's one of those like this problem is not something solvable for us right now. Like we've literally like went through all of our like brain power to try to come up with how to like handle this and we just like financially cannot handle that so um we're not like we just can't right now so that's the kind of week that I've had like we just don't have a working vehicle right now and that's like until we figure something out I don't know <laughs> But yeah, so it's been one of those weeks. <laughs> Wish me luck, help, fingers and toes crossed and everything else that we can figure something out with that. Um, but we're trying to just kind of not stress out insanely about it because like that doesn't do anything, you know? Anyway about it, guys. 
that's the kind of week I've had. <laughs> Let me know uh, down below what kind of week you've had, if you have anything you want to share. Um, if you have anything you want to unload, uh, you know, anything heavy, feel free, always feel free to, to unload here. Uh, if you have anything that happened that was awesome and you just want some, somebody to share it with, uh, you know, your exciting news, always feel free to share that. Um, you guys are welcome to talk about anything. Um, this is, you know, your, your comfy, cozy little corner of YouTube. And I want you guys to feel, you know, like you can come here and talk about whatever you want to, whatever you need to. So that's what I've had going on. And that's why there's been like a little bit of a lack of videos this week. That and then also you guys may have noticed I got the pocket peen tutorial done. So filmed that, did all the editing, did all the voiceovering, did everything that I had to do for that. And I'm really happy I was able to get that up before Saturday. I, that was kind of my goal was to get it done before Saturday. Um, so the pocket peen tutorial and the pocket peen pattern are both available. And I'm really like... I don't know, proud of myself for getting those done. Um, and then as far as like finished things I wanted to show you guys, I did finish this um, water bottle holder that I had been telling you guys about. I haven't, um, I haven't put the pocket on it yet that I showed you guys, which is right here. I'm going to put this little pocket that I freehanded um, a while back onto it, but I haven't done that yet. But it's going to look cute. It's going to match really well. But I wanted to show it to you guys how it is anyways first. So um, this was just, I made a magic, or not magic circle. I did the chain, chain two method, I think. However, however it's called, you know, the non-magic circle method of uh, doing the circle. And then I did just, you know, your standard, regular, normal way of increasing till you get up to a flat circle um, to the size of this water bottle. I figured make it for my personal um, water bottle and then it'll also fit, honestly, most other water bottles. It'll fit like a regular water bottle too. Um, <clears throat> then I did double crochets and chain ones all the way around. So just like double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Um, and then for each round, I did a stacked single crochet instead of doing like the chain three to go up to your next round. And then I did a half double crochet strap. Um, okay, so originally when I was making it, I was like, I'm going to make this really long, make it crossbody. Um, well, I didn't have enough yarn to do that. I literally used the entire bit of yarn that I had, and this is all that was left after I sewed in my end from, uh, you know, sewing my strap down. So what I did for my strap to secure it is I did single crochets as like the base foundation. Then I half double crocheted across. This is like the sturdiest strap ever, by the way, and I love it. Um, and then I went all the way over here and what I did was I actually slip stitched on because I wanted this to be really sturdy. So I slip stitched on back loop only. So like I sandwiched these together and just did the two, um, would have been back loop only and a front loop only of the other side so that you know they were just sandwiched together uh slip stitched across then i what i did was i sewed it and i flipped it you know this way and i grabbed the other loops that i didn't work into so i grabbed the front loop on this side and the back loop on this side and i sewed those together <clears throat> so um i think it makes it super sturdy and it looks nice and then here is what it looks like with the water bottle in it so the length just ended up being um, however much yarn I had. And I think that that honestly worked out as far as the strap goes. I think it honestly worked out. It's not a crossbody, but it's got plenty of length for carrying over your shoulder or whatever. My hubby was already like, I'm going to steal that when I go to the gym and, and put the water bottle in it and take it. So um, yeah, I guess my hubby is going to be using it too. <laughs> to be fair, I have... I don't really go anywhere, so um, I have absolutely no problem with that. I didn't have any like specific uh, intentions for it, but there you go. You can kind of get the idea. But I think it came out so cute, and I love it, and it's got plenty of space in here. Um, it could even fit like a slightly bigger water bottle if it wanted to, and even with the stretching, you know, that it does naturally when you put something heavy in it, I think it looks fantastic. And like I said, this strap is so sturdy. 
So let me get this in here so you guys can like really get a good look at it. Hide my face, that way maybe it'll focus a little bit better. <laughs> and then here's how the strap came out. I'm so, so happy with how that came out. Um, so that is my water bottle holder. And like I said, I am gonna probably put that pocket on there. I haven't put it on yet. Um, I just need to make sure that when I put it on, I like put it on in a way that it can still stretch nicely to go on my water bottle. Um, so that's something that I want to like make sure I do. But that's what it'll look like essentially with the pocket on there. And then the other thing I've got to show you guys is actually an update for the community blanket. So this right here is one of my community blanket um, squares where I put like some of your guys' squares together. Uh, if you don't know about the community blanket, I will link the community blanket project in the description box below. Don't mind me banging around over here. I'll put the uh, link to the community blanket project down there. And basically it is a blanket that we are all making together. Um, you guys are sending in squares and then I am putting them together um, to make a little like cozy blanket that I can wrap myself up in and feel like all of your guys' love. And I don't know, the, the concept was just like to see all of our, um, all of our like crochet together and it doesn't have to be crochet by the way it can be knit um if you knit or like I was basically saying any type of like a fiber art or something if you can make a square you're welcome to send it in um because this is for everybody you know if you're here like watching and it, it's for all skill levels even if it's like your very first granny square and you're new to crocheting feel free to send it in um this is for us like this is for the community that we can all see our crochet come together and like they'll be in the end this really beautiful blanket that's just totally a mishmash of everybody's personalities everybody's you know favorite color palettes and favorite you know stitches and creativity and things like that um this is like a good time to make those squares that like you've wanted to make that are not something that you want to make 50 of or 100 of to make a blanket but you would love to make like one or two and I was saying that you, there's no like you have to send in one square or two squares or whatever you can send in a couple squares if you want to I think that the limit that we sort of have like people have just kind of gone to on their own has been five um, people have sent in like up to five but like I said I don't have the whole thing is I don't want to have any hard and fast rules you could send in one square you could send in a couple squares um, they can be any color they can be any size like like anything we've had everything from thread to like big squares sent in okay so I went ahead and put together some more squares this time I did like a Christmas theme so I put together some of the Christmas squares. See if I can kind of show you. Um, I'm doing like 20 by 20 um, inch squares is the idea so that I can put these bigger squares together to make the blanket. So I'm working in a smaller space um, as far as connecting together the squares because um, the squares are all different sizes and even shapes. Some of them are not square. Um, so putting them together into like 20 by 20 squares is a much more manageable way to put them together eventually into a blanket. So also it means I can work on it while you guys are sending in squares. So um, I've been trying to work on getting through these squares that I have because I've got quite a bit of squares and I wanted to get them all connected. So what it means is I put them together and I do things like this. You guys will notice this like red border that I put on here and I just kind of went back and forth and added uh, rows and added stitches to try to get it up to the same height. So like I did on this part, I did double crochets. And then over here, I actually did triple crochets. And then over here, I did triple crochets. And then I think I did half double crochets. I don't remember. And then I, I think I actually went back and forth a few times, but basically just to match it up to the size that this was already at, you get what I'm saying? So just to try to make it into like the closest I can of a 20 by 20 square um, so that when I put these squares together, like these 20 by 20 squares together in the end, it will be a blanket. So that is a little update on that. And also guys, um, if you're new here and you don't already know, 
as I get in squares, I open them on the channel. So every square that I have received has been opened on the channel. I actually did get a mail and I it's in the other room so I'm gonna have to stop and go get it um, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a square so I wanted to open it on today's video so let me go grab that and then we can do a little happy mail okay guys so I got this bit of happy mail in and I'm pretty sure that this is from Chris loves crochet by the way I'm opening it right now I have not opened it. I'm pretty sure this is from Chris Loves Crochet because it is from Bangkok. And the name looks to me <clears throat> like it is probably Chris Loves Crochet. But this is pretty cool. It's super cool because I've never gotten anything from Thailand before. I just want to show you guys like it's got some of like the different writing on it, you know. I just love seeing like the way that the envelopes look and everything. Um, make sure I cover up any like pertinent information. But look at that. Like I love seeing the different ways that their stamps and everything look. It's just so cool. And like the way that the envelope work or the envelope looks with like the tie on it. But anyway, I have not opened this yet. I was waiting to open it till today. For this video and this j did just get here by the way um a couple days ago and i noticed that this is postmarked for um january 3rd so it took it a hot minute to get here considering it's like late march but inside of there is this this is happy new year and it's got the got a little dragon on it So excited. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. One moment, please. Bear with me. You guys can uh, feel free to talk, talk amongst yourself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. I think it's folded. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I, I figured it was like, you know, an envelope sort of. So I think I can actually rip my way across here. It's like opening a present. probably gonna laugh at me so much when she watches me open this like why are you opening it like that you weirdo I found my way in guys all right so first things first let me make sure I take everything out before I look at any of it and I'll just throw that over there deal with that momentarily all right let's see oh she gave me some of these stickers so she gave me some of these happy 2024 or happy new year uh, dragon stickers. Those are so awesome. And then she gave me, oh, this is cool. So I think it's the year of the dragon this year, if I know. Yes. Okay. Hey, Nova, happy year of the dragon with little uh, yarn emoji and dragon emoji. Wishing you a crochet-tastic Chinese New Year filled with creativity, joy, and lots of yarny adventures. May your hooks be swift and your projects be awesome as ever. Cheers from Bangkok. Chris loves crochet. Just a little typed up note. And then I think it probably came like, you know, like one of these numbers, like in here like this. And it's a little like Year of the Dragon card and it's so cute. That's adorable. I love that. That's going on my card wall for sure. And then she put like 2024 heart Chris on the back of it. I love that. That is adorable. And I'm going to put this here too. Cute, cute, cute. And then there is an envelope and there is a square too. But let's look at the card first. Okie dokie artichokey. Aww. 
so cute. This is such a cute card too. I don't know if this does something. Let me see if I can figure it out. Is that what this is? I feel like this probably does something. Bear with me a moment. I don't know if this is just like multi-layered or if it's like a, one of those ones where like things move around and whatnot. You guys get to watch my brain cells try to brain cell. Okay, I think it is just multi-layered. Oh wait, does it, does it fold out? <laughs> my brain guys, it's not braining very well. Okay, it's super, super cute anyway about it. I don't wanna like <laughs> break it trying to see if it does anything. Like if it like, you know, things slide around or pop out or whatever, but I think it is so cute with its like multi-layeredness. I'll have to play around with it gently. There's also like a like, I don't know, a little loop in the back. I feel like I'm probably, I'm probably missing something like not understanding like I'm not putting together some uh, some brain cells and seeing that this does something but it's super super cute already um, but it said Merry Christmas Nova and hubby thank you Nova for sharing your heart with us here is a piece of my heart for your blanket hugs to you love Chris and there's a little heart oh I love it and this is so cute I love the little derpy face on the guy in the sled. He's like, I can't, obviously I can't make the little, little heart mouth, <laughs> but I love that cute little derp face. Um, that was so sweet. Wow, oh my gosh. Holy smokes. This is super cool. Look at that. Wow, it's got like twisty, crissy, crossy stuff. That is so cool. Wow, I love that. That is beautiful. I don't know if you guys can like really see. Oh, that is so cool. I love it. I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Chris. And I will be so, so happy to put that into the blanket. Thank you so much for sending this all the way from Thailand. I am definitely going to be putting, what I've been doing is putting um, some of the like clippings, like the stamps and like just cool things off of the envelopes, you know, that are like identifying things off of the envelopes, like, you know, like little little Thai phrases or whatever. And I've been putting them in my junk journal, um, which is like a journal where you don't, you don't really write things um, or anything like that, but you just kind of put like, uh, think of like stuff that you might say for scrapbooking, like stickers and pressed flowers and, um, I don't know, like pieces of napkins from restaurants that you go to or pieces, uh, like clippings out of, um, what are they called? Like pamphlets and stuff like that. Um, and I do that and I just put together like random things that look cool. There's literally no rules. It can be anything. Um, you could just do like a whole bunch of stickers. Like you could do anything you want. And like, that's the fun of it is that there is no rules to it. At least that's what I'm doing for mine. Um, at first, when I first started it, I was trying to like plan out my pages and like be very like themed and meticulous about it because I like wanted it to look really aesthetic. And then I was like, why am I doing this? The whole point of this is that I can just sit down, literally not have a thought in my brain and just like smack things onto the page take some glue, take some tape, put things on there that are fun, things that I thought were cute, but that I have no purpose for, you know, just different stuff like that. Uh, washi tapes and stuff like that. Um, and I've got some spreads in there that say like, I put like bits of happy, um, which are bits of happy mail. And I put like little stickers that have come in your guys's packages in there. And like, um, you know, the different things you guys have sent with your granny squares. I've just been like putting little things in there and I, I love it. I love it so much. And then of course you guys can't see it, but over here I've shown it before. I have a card wall that I'm doing and, uh, any of your guys like notes and cards and stuff that you send, um, with your squares or just in general, uh, I put over there on the wall. I have so many, the wall is very full and I actually have some that aren't on the wall yet, uh, sitting on top of this little set of drawers right there. <laughs> I think I might have to like start cycling them or something. 
uh, to put some up and, you know, take some down and just take some down, pass it around. Anyways, guys, that I know I have been talking forever. I'm so sorry. Um, but that is like what I've had going on this week and opening up the granny square. I love it so much. It's so cute. Uh, and showing you guys what I've been working on and I got together some more granny squares. Um, I also have put together more pieces of granny squares. Like I like not like full 20 by 20 squares, but like, you know, maybe like part of a 20 by 20 square and stuff. So like I'm working on it. Uh, also started working on a big project that is going to be something for next month um, that I'm pretty really very excited about and I can't tell you anything more about it because it's going to be a surprise. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get into the community spotlight montage. Uh, I did want to remind you guys that tomorrow is Gnome of the Month. So tomorrow is Gnome of the Month reveal day where I show you guys what I've been working on this month. Um, so if you would like to, uh, and I show you guys what you've been working on this month, sorry. Uh, so if you would like to share your gnomes, it can be any gnomes um, that you have made. It's basically the same details as community spotlight. It doesn't have to be crochet. Um, you send in your makes the same way, you know, with my email and everything. The only difference is uh, you put gnome of the month as the subject line. So same amount of picture or like same thing. You can put as many pictures as you want. Uh, you don't need to put any info unless you want to, except for that I need your name. So basically all the same info, but it's our Gnome of the Month video um, that we do at the end, the last Saturday of the month, um, where I show you guys the gnome I've been working on this month, and I show you guys all the gnomes you've been working on this month. And then the first Saturday of the month that comes up after, um, I talk about my plans for Gnome of the Month the next month. And then we wait all month, and the last Saturday of the month I show you guys what I got up to. So if you would like to participate in Gnome of the Month tomorrow, I am so excited because I've got a lot of submissions for Gnome of the Month tomorrow. It is going to be a Gnome party, like not just a Gnome parade of pictures, it's going to be a Gnome party of pictures. So make sure you guys watch tomorrow's video. It's going to be pretty awesome. Lots of creativity, lots of fun. You can send in any gnomes that you've made. If you'd like to just get those into me ASAP and I will get them into tomorrow's video. Anyways, guys, let us hop into community spotlight. Let us see what you guys have been up to. As always, please leave a comment below saying something positive about the people's uh, submissions that you're going to see here in a moment. You know, anything that pops into your mind, you know, if you think, oh, dude, that yarn that you paired together looks so cool. Um, I love the way you did that. Oh, my favorite item is this or whatever. Anything positive that you want to leave, just like take two seconds, type it out. That might be the nicest thing that that person has heard all week. That might be the thing that makes them smile, that makes them keep going with their, with their craft, you know. You never know what people are going through. Kind words have such a ripple effect on people. They have, they can just change the way the trajectory, trajectory, trajectory of their week or their month. Like you have no idea how big those words can be. Something that takes you five seconds, not even a big deal to you. They can mean a lot to somebody. Also guys, take some time for yourself today. Make some time for you to do something that you want to do. Okay? Just for you. Not for anyone else. Not because you're required to. Just for you. And take a deep breath. You got this. Have a great weekend, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Bye! And first up, we've got our submission from Colleen4160. She said that she finished a rabbit by K&J Dolls, which is a pattern by... Oof, I don't think I can say this, but I will attempt to. CJ Thawar Supa Charo Charoen. <laughs> uh, anyway, the pink rabbit monster witch. Uh, and she used the little... <laughs> hubby said he came over here to help me and he cannot uh he used or she used the little basket from my mushroom gnome with it which was so so cool i think it's so cute with it uh and she finished a rag floor rug for her hubby she said they're real popular in the 80s super cute and next up we have sonia p she said she's been finishing up some whips the first one is an arizona diamonds baby afghan and then she said she made some Wednesday dolls and one was a commission and the other one is finally something for her. I love these. These are so cute. So cute. Glad you made yourself one too. Uh, third one is a small stitch made with worsted yarn. Bought the pattern off of Etsy by Sunny Princess Crochet. Super, super cute also. And the fourth are two cute moo cows. Um, she said... 
Why did I say two? There's no two in there. <laughs> two were a gift for a little girl and her mom, like a mommy and me type thing. And then the other two are just two extra ones that she made. So stinking cute. And next up, our beautiful Larnie sent in some stuff. She said she usually only posts her gnomes, but she thought she'd be brave. So I am really proud of you. She crocheted some baskets and filled them with chocolate eggs. And then they have a nice cream shop. So she thought she would have a go at selling them. Uh, the blue tit and the robin are for her dad's birthday on Thursday. Laughing at my chair. No, I'm laughing at the blue tit. <laughs> <laughs> He loves these birds uh, and the little teddy bears. She just fancied trying something different. Uh, they are so cute. And I love these little baskets. Like, I think that is genius. Like, they're seriously the cutest thing ever. Also, I'm sorry for being immature. I know that that's... You can't laugh at the tits. They can't change their scientific designation. <laughs> I know that's actually the bird's names, but it's just still funny that's to me. And then she also wanted to share this thing that she saw at a place nearby. It's a coronation crown uh, and stuff that was on display. And she thought that I might like seeing it because it was like, you know, fiber artsy. And I think it is so cool. Thank you for sharing. And then our lovely Frozen sent in her look of the draw blanket. She said she used Stylecraft DK for it. It is so pretty. And next up, we have a submission from Barbara. This is a diamond painting. I love it. It's like a Doctor Who um, Starry Night type of diamond painting. At least that's my interpretation. And then she said she started this off as a blanket, but she thinks she's going to make it into a shawl. I think it's going to make a beautiful shawl. And then Diane sent in a top that she made. And she made this using a... Um, poppy pullover stitch by Evelyn and Peter Crochet but she didn't follow the tutorial she just used the stitch so I thought that was so cool like that that's very very skillful and then she said that she used Hobby Lobby's through thick and thin yarn for it it's like a boucle type of yarn that varies in its thickness and then she made the Blooming Lotus Square, a tutorial by Sisters in Stitch. She said she's on a mission to use her scrap yarns up and she decided to make a random squares blanket uh, with YouTube tutorials. This is the first of 20 that she'll need. They're going to be super scrappy, like just limited to her scrap yarn with all different squares. So it's going to be super random. I can't wait to see that. I think that's so fun. Oh my gosh, our beautiful Julie Ann sent these in. She said that this is a squid with a tutorial by Double Dutch Crochet. Uh, Polly and Peep Chickens are a tutorial by Notkey Creative Studio. And Piglet is a pattern from Wonder Crochet. And Tigger is also a pattern by Wonder Crochet. <laughs> these are so stinking cute. And I love that you use your little crochet couch uh, as like your setting for your picture sometimes. I think this is like the cutest thing ever. They look like they're all just like having a little hangout session. And lastly, we have the gorgeous, uh, gorgeous homestead, <laughs> aka Gail. Uh, she sent in some cat ear beanies that she said weren't as cute as mine, but they're fun for gifts. Girl, those are so freaking cute. Don't knock your stuff. Those are so cute. And she made a little collage of them. The lower left one is made from some yarn that I gave her and the Sesame Street yarn that she used to make a funky toddler hat with. Ah, uh, they're so cute. Thank you so much for sharing. And that is it for Community Spotlight, guys. Thank you so much for participating. I will see you guys tomorrow for Gnome of the Month. And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend.